Hello, Stellar people. I am Trey Hodges, and today I'm going to walk you through my watercolor process. I've been working in watercolors for a few years, and this is just a, a short demo on my, my full process. And this is the end product, the beautiful final image. And this is where we're starting from. On the left is the thumbnail, the quickest version I did just to get an idea. And then I copy that. This is done in Photoshop, I believe. Yeah. Photoshop, and I'm doing a quick color study because digital is the fastest way to get a nice quick rendering of what you want the colors to look like. I don't do this all the time. Sometimes I can just imagine it in my head, but this one I wanted to do a little bit differently. So the color sketch, you know, will inform the final watercolor. And this is where we came from. The middle is the thumbnail, left is the rough sketch, and right is my tight pencils. And here's a clearer look at, a, at that. It has all the details I need. I like it. Looks pretty good. This is pretty tight for me. I usually go a little bit looser, a little rougher, but I wanted this one to be really clean. And so I transfer that tight pencil onto watercolor paper. Right now I'm using a watercolor block uh, from Arches, I think it's a hundred and eighty pound. That's the weight of the paper. But we first start off with a an underpainting, which is a, usually for me a wash of pink, but it could also be a wash of uh, a pink and maybe a light yellow, a light orange, like a fleshy tone, and I just. I just want coverage, so I want to separate the image from the background, which is pretty much all watercolor is, is you want to preserve the white, but take out, you know, block in everything else that isn't going to be white. And that's what I'm doing. I do the whole figure in just this one color, and this is the underpaint. And it always, you know, fades as it dries. So I try to keep that in mind. And for the next, I go from, uh, I usually do flesh tones first, just to, you know, remind myself where, where all of his flesh is. Uh, it's almost like a, an underpainting layer, but it's the first thing I usually do because the flesh tone is usually the most important or in my mind it is, I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> that's, it's just, this is just how I do it. This is my process. And, you know, hopefully you can feel free to take, you know, whatever ideas and concepts that interest you and apply it to your own work. But yeah, this is just one way of working. And this is the second step, which is I apply a darker, more, vibrant, more rich tone for all of his, you know, all of his skin. And I like this, this shade of brown. It's beautiful. One of my favorite colors uh, is Van Dyke Brown. It's a beautifully rich, like, coffee color. It's, it's lovely. And I forgot part of his chest, so I'm doing that right now. <laughs> you sometimes forget bits and pieces and you know. But as long as you know you can correct it. And I darken his eyes, his upper lip, and I tend to leave the shadows uh, the last part of the first step. 
because it'll fade and I can touch it up later. And this is a wet into wet technique for when you want more muted, more faded colors. And so I wetted the all of his the blue of his jacket. It'll be a pale blue. And you know, I'm going in with that blue color. And wet always looks diffused and softer than if you're using direct uh, water. Well, direct watercolor, you know, pigment onto the character. So I'm just, it's more or less just staining. I'm staining his uh, his jeans, this pale blue. But one of the best parts about doing an underpainting is that you can feel it underneath the, uh, you know, the colors that you lay on top of it. So you can feel that fleshy pink color even though I'm going to cover it up or cover most of it up but you can still feel it and I kind of like that about watercolors <laughs> this is wet into wet for his hair For it to make a nice soft soft fuzzy <laughs> soft and fuzzy hair I like his hairstyle that's it's one of my favorite parts about this this character I wanted that fro hawk that <laughs> I, I just had to have him with that so it's one of his defining things and now we're going in with a, a muted light blue for the jeans and I'm not doing anything like tricky I'm just I use just you know layers to to get the effects you can do a lot of things with watercolor and that's one of the coolest parts about it that you can feel what's underneath but it's layering that I like. And I can make things darker and go from like a really soft, soft color, and then build on top of that to make a, a nice, deep and rich colors. It just depends on how, you know, how you wanna use, how you wanna use the watercolor. And now I'm going in with more concentrated colors. And here I'm doing the this frohawk again. And once you lay lay a color down, or if it's still wet, you can go back into it and reintroduce colors that'll still get some slight fade on it, uh, some slight softness. But I usually save the dry brushing and detail work till the very end. Now I'm going in with uh, some shadows. This is uh, one of the first parts of the detailing. I try to get some, uh, sh you know, some soft shadows. Well, that was kind of hard, but <laughs> but it usually fades a little lighter, but. some detailing on the shirt I like the contrast of the pink with that pale blue
Although blue is my favorite color, so I use blue whenever I can. And I have some really good blue watercolor watercolors. I never knew detail increases would be so fun. <laughs> I like his pants though. They're a little bit too tight for me, but for a young person that that's <laughs> old fashioned. <sighs> his blue high tops, which is, I think, gonna be one of his defining features, like fashion-wise, it was like high tops and his fro hog. And, I don't know, this is just stuff you think about. As you're drawing a character, you kind of think about, okay, what, what do they like? What do they do? And it's not quite about your character because at a certain point the character becomes their own and you can kind of imagine what they would do and not what you would do and that's kind of cool it's one of the coolest parts about making characters is that they start to live in your mind at least I think we're gonna start detailing. Yeah. I want that. I'm not sh quite sure if I want his hair to be black or a dark brown. So I'm thinking it's more of a, a dark, dark brown, dark reddish brown or something. I'm, I'm still figuring out the character, so you know. <laughs> when, once you have some, a character drawn, and you take it to color, you start thinking about the character in different ways. And so I'm thinking, okay, I think his hair is gonna be like a reddish brown. But I want him young, but not too young. And I'm still wondering if I got his youthfulness down, but I think he looks pretty good. Ah, decisions, decisions. And now we're putting on the final dark shadows just to punch it up a bit. And give some this character some definition. things I like about watercolor is that I can I can leave some things vague not much of an outline and some parts I I go in really dark and really outline so that there's this contrast and it kind of slightly fades into the background and you can still tell what the figure is and I don't know it's hard to define but I, I like that I like it and that is the character. And the final part is I cut it out using X-Acto knife. And this is it. This was a really fun project for me. You know, in trying to find this character, color is a really great way of defining a character, of their look. I like it. So this is where we started with the thumbnail and the color sketch. And it came out better than, well, it's supposed to, but this is a great way to start the project. And everything's pretty much how I want it. 
And yeah, thumbnail, rough drawing, drawing, and the final watercolor. And this was a really fun project of trying to figure out a character and his look. And it came out well better than exp I expected, but <laughs> sometimes you can be hit or miss, but I like this one. So this is project complete. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of my watercolor process. And I'll be sure to do more in the future because this was this was fun. Feel free to take anything you find interesting and apply it to your own art. And hopefully you'll try out watercolor because it's really fun. And I hope you keep shining. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.